Hello everyone and welcome back to Zakit Educational Channel. So in this video, we are going to know some of the important topics which are asked in the ARS NET Environmental Science paper, which are very very important to know before the examination. So get ready with your notes so that you can write down the important points which we are going to discuss in this video. So without wasting much time, let's start today's video. So this question was asked in the previous year's question of the ARS NET Environmental Science paper, and the question was actually IAEA category of radioactive waste is divided into how many categories? So first of all, what is IAEA? You should know it is International Atomic Energy Agency, and its headquarter is in Vienna, Austria. So according to the IAEA, the radioactive waste are categorized into six categories so you should know all the six categories so from the high level waste is the first category and this high level waste how they are treated so they are deposited in the deep geological disposal so the disposal of high level waste category of the radioactive waste is done by burying them in the deep inside the earth that means deep geological disposal coming to the second category that is ILW that means intermediate level waste that are radioactive waste and they are disposed in the intermediate depth in the earth so they are not inside much deep inside they are in the intermediate depth then coming to the third thing that is llw they are low level waste their category is low level waste and they are disposed near the surface of the earth ground surface so inside the ground only but near the surface so they are near surface disposal coming to the fourth one th that is what that is vslw don't get confused with vllw because vslw is very short lived waste so these waste they are disposed in the dk storage container and they decay automatically coming to the next thing that is vvlw they are very low level waste so they are disposed of in the landfill kind of disposal technique so in the landfill not like the hlw ilw llw they are disposed in general landfill disposal and the last one is the ew that is the exempt waste so they are exempted from the disposal so because they are not that much harmful so they are exemption or clearance kind of radioactive waste which are ew that is exempt waste so i hope you have noted down all these six categories of the iaea category very important it is asked in the examination and here i have highlighted the vienna why i have highlighted vienna i have highlighted because i have already told you many times that if you are preparing any new topic or revising you should go through connected revision what is this connected revision so here vienna if you know that in vienna convention for protecting the ozone layer when it was conducted it was conducted in the year 1985 in vienna austria so in this way if you are knowing a new topic you can be able to recall the previous revision topics and it will help you to boost your revision so you should always connect with other topics which you are coming through the new topics so vienna automatically you should connect with 1985 vienna convention to prevent the ozone depletion now let's move on to the next important frequently asked concept so we will know about the waste water treatment basic process yes the questions are always asked from this section that is waste water treatment so first of all what is waste water treatment when the sewage water or waste water from all the places from household from industry all these are going they are to be treated before they are released into the water bodies yes they should be treated and at a safe level they should be disposed of in our water bodies in order to save the organisms so for that what we have we have waste water treatment plant everywhere and what are the process used in order to treat the waste water so these things are important which we will be knowing now so here i will just tell you the basic things related to all the steps not going deep inside we will make a separate video on that but these things are also important you should note down so what are the steps involved in the waste water treatment steps are first is preliminary treatment then is primary treatment then secondary or biological treatment and finally it is tertiary or advanced level treatment so here in this diagram you can see you should just know this diagram so raw sewage that means the sewage coming from all the sources it is coming to this wastewater treatment plant and preliminary treatment involves screening of that grit chamber is there everything will know basic thing in the coming slide don't worry 
after this all screening of all the solid materials the primary treatment process takes place it takes place in the primary sedimentation tank mostly it is the sedimentation technique which is also followed the third step actually secondary treatment which is in the secondary sedimentation tank and it is followed actually by the aeration tank where the oxygen is supplied because biological organisms they are treating that that's why secondary treatment is also called as biological treatment with the help of living organisms we are treating the waste water and as a result the gases are released methane carbon dioxide which are again used in the sludge digestion tank and after that it is going to the sludge disposal or if it is more waste that is it is not that much purified then we are going to the tertiary or the advanced treatment which is the final treatment of the effluent and then we are releasing into our water bodies so this is the basic diagram this you can take the screenshot and save it so now we will know the basic thing related to all these steps let's move on to the next slide the first step is preliminary treatment so preliminary treatment in the wastewater treatment what it involves it involves the removal of floating materials yes along with the sewage water many floating materials the solid materials they come such as leaves paper rags so all these things are removed in this process and settleable in organic solids what are they they are sand and grit so besides oily substances these things are also removed fats oil greases these floating materials and settleable inorganic solids they are removed and the three major types of equipments used in preliminary treatment are note down they are screeners grit chambers and skimming tanks i repeat they are screeners grit chambers and skimming tanks these are helpful in order to remove all these floating materials so i hope it is understandable now because this is very simple when the water comes sewage water it is having the solid materials the leaf paper sand grit so these things are removed in the preliminary treatment now coming to the next treatment next step that is primary treatment so it is aimed at the removal of the fine suspended organic solids so what happened is in the preliminary treatment we have removed the bigger size the solid and here we are aiming to remove the fine suspended solid that is organic solid that cannot be removed in the preliminary treatment so they are removed in the primary treatment so primary treatment involves mainly the process of sedimentation or settling so these things are asked primary treatment major process is sedimentation or settling technique and it is sometime necessary to use chemical coagulants to facilitate or help in the sedimentation technique and here comes the most important thing that is the most commonly used coagulants in the sewage treatment what are the coagulants used they are alum that means aluminum sulfate iron salts that is ferric sulfate ferrous sulfate ferric chloride lime and soda ash that is sodium carbonate sodium silicate and sodium aluminate so these are the major that commonly used coagulants used for the sedimentation technique they are used as chemical coagulants in the primary treatment so these are very important note down all these things coming to the next thing that is the secondary or biological treatment so as i told you biological treatment why it is called because the living organisms are used that means biological treatment of sewage is required for the removal of dissolved and fine colloidal organic matter so here the dissolved and fine colloidal organic matter are removed with the help of microorganisms what kind of microorganism they can be bacteria algae fungi protozoa rotifers and nematodes even they are used because they decompose these unstable organic matter and they form the stable inorganic form so as a result the water is treated efficiently and the sewage is more efficiently clean and now we will know that secondary treatment are also having different categories anaerobic aerobic and pond process so this we should know aerobic process is also having three sub categories suspended growth system attached growth system suspended attached growth system combined so aerobic technique means where oxygen is needed by the microorganism in order to treat the waste so here that is also having three categories suspended growth system what are the process activated sludge process sequencing batch reactor deep sap i'm telling just the important one aerobic lagoons aerobic digestion 
oxidation ditch so all these things are coming under aerobic process of secondary or biological treatment coming to the attached growth system it includes trickling filters i'll make a line here trickling filters roughing filters rotating biological contactors pack bed reactors so these are coming under the aerobic process but attached growth system category now coming to the suspended attached growth combined system where the common process is activated biofilters that is the example is trickling filter solids contact process now coming to the anaerobic process where oxygen is not required for the microorganism there are also two categories suspended growth system and attached growth system suspended growth system anaerobic digestion is done single stage or two stage and anaerobic contact process anaerobic filter process and expanded bed process they come under the attached growth process system in the anaerobic category next system coming under the secondary or biological treatment is pond process where the pond is prepared aerobic ponds are prepared anaerobic ponds and facultative ponds so these three ponds are based on the type of microorganisms which we are using as they are aerobic they are anaerobic or they are facultative aerobic organism so these things are important you should note down just know what are the categories and what are the common process under them under the secondary or biological treatment of the wastewater treatment coming to the next thing that is the basic process of tertiary treatment so tertiary treatment or advanced treatment is sometimes needed for the removal of suspended and dissolved substances after the conventional primary and secondary treatment so after primary so after primary primary and secondary treatment at the end also if the suspended and dissolved substances are not removed then we are going for the tertiary or advanced treatment so in general the effluent of the sewage obtained after secondary treatment can be conveniently disposed without causing any nuisance so mostly after the secondary treatment we are releasing the water into the water bodies but sometimes we are going for the tertiary treatment so tertiary treatment also we should know when we are going for this tertiary treatment when it is required so when the quality of the effluent effluent means the water coming from the secondary treatment to be discharged does not meet the standard requirement so we know we are having certain standards for every chemicals which should be disposed of we are having all the standards we should know water quality water parameter if it is not meeting those standard requirements particularly in the developed countries then we are going for the tertiary or advanced treatment also when we are going for the tertiary treatment when we need to remove the nitrogen and phosphorus compounds because they can lead to the what they can lead to the eutrophication if the nitrogen and phosphorus contents are more they can lead to the eutrophication which will damage the ecosystem of the water bodies so then we are going for the tertiary or advanced treatment this mark booster playlist is very very helpful for all the students who are applying for the ars net environmental science paper and they have already said every time that it is coming from this playlist most of the questions so this playlist is here i have provided the link in the i button as well as in the description below more than 25 videos are there if you watch those videos and make notes or even go through all those video then definitely questions will be coming from there so just practice them as a revision it is a mark booster playlist so it will be very very important for you and in the coming videos we will be discussing more about ars net environmental science subject so stay tuned for that don't forget to subscribe the channel to get all further updates see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself